the bodies of others, the new authoritarians, COVID-19, and the war against the human. Written by Naomi Wolf. Narrated by Chris Gobbitz. Published by All Seasons Press. Copyright 2022 by Naomi Wolf. And that stirring sent a wave of emotion over him, a simple and reverent sympathy with his heart, his human heart, with its questions and riddles, beating all alone up here in the icy void. Thomas Mann, The Magic Mountain, 1924. For the 2049 Generation. Introduction On February 14, 2022, as protesting Canadian truckers filled Parliament Square in Ottawa, giving joyous hope to all those worldwide who were done with pandemic totalitarianism, it was Christian Freeland, as Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's Deputy Prime Minister, who gave chilling proof of how far the global elites would go to enforce absolute compliance to their dictates. As of today, a bank or other financial service provider will be able to immediately freeze or suspend an account without a court order, she announced. In doing so, they will be protected against civil liability for actions taken in good faith. If your truck is being used in these illegal blockades, your corporate accounts will be frozen. The insurance on your vehicle will be suspended. Police shattered truck windows, arrested a hundred protesters, including the demonstration's leaders, and Prime Minister Justin Trudeau invoked an emergency order. For a time, representative government was suspended in the nation of Canada. It would be an overstatement to say that Christian Freeland was ever a friend, but for a while we were in the same circle of hard-working, underpaid reporters and editors, all just trying to earn a living. I'd seen her around at social events in Manhattan, and one day, when we were both adjusting our makeup, she after a television appearance, me in preparation for an interview, she mentioned, happily and with absolute confidence, that she was shortly to run for Parliament in Canada. At the time, her humble title was as Reuters Managing Director and Editor, Consumer News. I remember looking at her with astonishment at this out of the blue leapfrogging of many career levels. She must have powerful friends, I thought. It turned out to be a good guess. Miss Freeland was part of a small cadre of influentials connected to the World Economic Forum. Indeed, she is now on the WEF Board of Trustees. She and her peers, along with allied elites in other fields, eventually masterminded a crime against humanity unprecedented in our times a crime that involves the theft of assets and the destruction of cultures, as well as untold deaths. This book is about how we came to this harrowing civilizational crossroads, engaged in a war against vast, impersonal forces, with limitless power over our lives, for the freedoms we have taken for granted. How those forces seized upon two years of COVID-19 panic in sinister, new ways. And how, yet, against overwhelming odds, we still might win. Others have looked at this war from a biomedical perspective, or from a strictly political one. My focus is on how this ongoing war against us is far more basic, aimed at nothing less than dissolving the meaning of humanity itself, and undoing of the rich cultural legacy we in the West have long treasured and passed on to succeeding generations. In those two years, the COVID-19 pandemic, which began unfolding with the unprecedented global lockdown in March 2020, has fundamentally remade human relations, capitalism, and culture in the West. No matter that in the past we had lived through far graver medical crises, without even passing thought to stopping all congregation, suspending the production of all culture, or compelling all healthy people to cover their faces and close their businesses and keep apart. This time, our elites used the crisis to shut down Western norms of liberty, 
the human-centered world and civilization itself.